No death to us is the next level. Something to aim for, something to shoot for, something to take me out of this mundane existence. That's something that we toy with all the time within the band is life and death. Especially death being something that's inevitable and we're all gonna deal with on all sorts of levels. We're still very discontent and hateful. You know, as I get older, I don't get calmer or, or milder. Like, I still look at the world the same way I did years and years ago. You know, the only pressure was to make the best song possible in the context of making the best record possible. I think, I think it's possible. Personally, I would like to just scratch and then go back in and, and, and do everything again. The good thing about that is that it frees up more track space on the two inch, because it's two inch 16. So for basic tracks, we only have 16. Mm -hmm. So if I know that there's only gonna be one guitar track and it's scratch, mm -hmm. that's awesome. I think it's better, I think it's better sonically because I can use more mics for the drums and bass. So, uh, next question, click tracks. Have you guys been rehearsing with them, or are you planning on using them, or are you going to just not? We never do. Awesome. There's certain spots where there's not, like, really a timing, like, like stuff where, like, I, uh, you know, like, like, like the drums stop, and everybody stops, and then I come in. Right. And, like, awesome. a, like, there's not, there's not, like, a real, like, right. we've tried to put counts to, like, to like, well, and it never works. Like, it only right. works by feel. So just keep lot. time. Yeah, yeah just exactly. Just do, like do what feels good. When we started the band, it was just us three. While we were on tour with our older band, we discussed this project in great detail of how it would be. And we knew that what we were doing was, was finite and um, we'd have to start something new. We've had this idea to do this for a while and it finally like materialized. We decided to do something uh, that would stretch our boundaries and, and, and define us. This is who we are. With the racks, do like, you know, high, mid, low, high, mid, low. Just keep going around in a circle. Yeah, with, with Time Insults the Mind, we came together really fast just because it was the three of us in a room again. The drum has a nice tone. We're just going to articulate that punch. That's a very good. I'm, I'm quite happy with the kick drum sound. Yeah, it's, it's just a matter of getting getting more top uh -huh. um, out of it. More head attack. Yeah, more more of the actual like beater right. beater sound, right? I mean, yeah. that's kind Absolutely. of what we're talking about, right? Yeah. The second record was just like us being hungry to write a second record, and the third record I felt was just us taking a step back, relaxing, and thinking about what we wanted to do. We took a long time on this one. We took enough time to let things become really natural and let things kind of play themselves out rather than having to structure anything. Go again, go again, go again. There it is. Well, me, me, Gary, and Paul have been together for about 20 years now, um, playing in different projects. Black Anvil's been around for eight now. 
we wanted to remain a three piece because we didn't want anyone to ruin the dynamic that we have together. The three of us have a history. When it was time to start writing this record, um, somehow Gary and Paul started writing stuff for two guitars. You're so limited as three when it comes to like a live setting. And even though we would write songs as a three piece, there's still the issue like, you know, it drops out when there's a guitar solo and it's just bass. And the bass can only hold so much of the bottom. Uh, you, you know, it, it's different with when Sabbath does it, it, it's completely different than when we do it. Paul started picking up the guitar a lot more. Paul uh, spent a lot of time on this stuff at home and then returning to practice sessions and showing us what he has and, you know, we would go from there. Gary is a solid guitar player who writes like a guitar player for a three-piece band. I get home and I putz around with, with things and I'm a little more... I can layer a little easier because it's not as natural for me to just write these monstrous riffs. So when I start dabbling and start layering, that's when we run into problems with how we're going to play this live. We realized we were going to need a second guitar player if we were going to pull this stuff off on stage. We needed to step our game up. The only way to do that was to have a fourth person. When I heard them, I thought to myself, for a black metal band from New York, this is what should sound like. It took a while to find the right person and he just sort of stumbled into the picture really easily. They didn't put up a wall with me. Like I got treated with respect instantly and I didn't overstep my bounds realizing that, you know, these are three guys that have been playing together for several years, even prior to Black Anvil. Uh, so I just kind of eased my way in and uh, they treated me as family, I treat them as such. It's hard for me to play with other guitar players. I, I, it's not because of my ego, it's just because uh, there's a, a way that I play that doesn't match with the way other guitar players play and it's, it's frustrating at times. And um, I, di I, I didn't have this problem with Jeremy. It just adds a whole nother level, a whole nother layer, and just a whole nother garbage bag of heaviness that just permeates. So it's, it's really necessary, um, and it definitely shows off in the live shows. Really hard. That's that's the fastest one. That I, blast. Well, I know. It's a nutty blast. And, and not not to disparage your drumming abilities. It's just the the one song we've never really practiced that much since we wrote it. Which never. One? This one. Yeah. We only started practicing it. Us three practice it maybe two times before we practice with you. But uh. Yeah, this is like one of the last ones. But compared to all the other songs, we never really practiced it all together. Yeah, there's probably a reason. We wrote it. We recorded it. Jeremy wasn't even in the band yet, and. And we kind of just kept going. It was definitely a challenge, I think, to do this record, um, as every record should be. If the next record is not a challenge to the band or to the individual, uh, I think it's settle. Knowing that we were reaching for something a little bit stronger, 
You definitely have to push yourself. You definitely have to challenge yourself a little bit more. Why continue even playing music or doing any sort of art form if you're not going to improve on it? I mean, everybody has their, their niche, but um, there's always room for improvement when you're trying to do something. There are times where I listen to our, you know, our masters, and I'm like, "How is this? How are we doing this?" That wasn't as bad as I thought. No, no, it's a, it's a good take. It felt like the blasts were okay. I think they were okay at both. Yeah, it seemed like the second one was more even. Yeah. for us to record a record um, based on the experience that we've had together um, is pretty long. Um, the last record we probably did in six days. There's more urgency on our last two records because of the lack of time factor, I think. On this record, we had a little more time, actually a lot more time to focus on what we really wanted. I had worked with, with Jay in the past on, on a record and he's just a guy that from the beginning, I'd always say, like, oh, if we ever have a budget, be great to record a heavier record with Jay Roberts. I just emailed him. I said, hey, man, we're, this is a band I'm doing now, and uh, here's some demos. We'd love to make a record with you. And he wrote back, completely psyched and, uh, and into it. I wonder if, there's, if the earlier ones might have been just a little bit more... Like, I like that the, the, the thrash, like, went, it was a little bit like, ah, 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 you know, like, a little bit haywire. But the earlier ones, maybe they're a little bit more, a little yeah, bit less that way in a good way, you know? It's brutally fast. It's very fast. Jay was an amazing commandeer at that board. 
um, just knew what we were looking for uh, before our song was even done, kind of knew where to take us, where to steer us, where to suggest where to go next. Um, and that was really, really helpful. I have a preconception that metal is always recorded with close mic guitars. It, it is. Yeah. But and I so was, I was like, of course I should close mic the guitars. That'll probably be fine. Mm -hmm. But in fact, like, more and more, like, further back feels like the right... I mean, it's only sensible that you put the mics further back because you never, ever it's listen to your amp with your right. ear next to it. You know what it is? Like, if I was playing more of a straight through loud Marshall kind of metal sound where it's like a cranked JCM 800. Yeah. I feel like maybe then close miking it would probably be a better idea. But because I already have shit tons of distortion, yeah, like it's just better just to hear what the room makes it right. sound like. Recording with Jay Robbins was definitely uh, an experience I would like to repeat. First and foremost, I was psyched because I'm a fan of Government Issue and he was in Government Issue. He's a fantastic engineer, and he knew exactly what we wanted. And um, in certain respects where he didn't know exactly what we wanted, he was open to ideas. He, he didn't, uh, he's not the type of engineer that um, discounts your ability and your experience as a musician. Like, even though I might not know my way around a board and uh, with microphones and things, he, he listened to things I had to say and applied them and was surprised that it worked. I, I'm happy with the, the sound we're getting from the amps. Can you warm it up coming through the board a little more now? To tie, like, like something through the, your speakers? Mm. Something you want to do to it before we track or? No, I just want to hear it in context a little bit. Okay, let me tune in. I don't, you know, if I, could, if I could get away without doing anything to it. Okay. You know, I mean, like I kind of don't want to, I never want to EQ if there's something that, that is missing, I'd rather like. You don't think it's like, too trebly or anything like there's that? There's that, maybe on the Marshall side, maybe a pinch. Okay. It might be a little sizzly. I'll let you, uh, but let's do the hear it up again. I want to fix it because I don't, I, I tend to just turn knobs too abruptly and fuck things up when we get to this point. The idea of an engineer telling me I could just plug into my pedal board, into my amp, and through, you know, three. 412 cabinets is unheard of <laughs> as far as any other engineer I've worked with, so. These songs have this rock and roll element to it. You know, we, we, we sort of want like an open rock and roll sound, but it still has to sound like us live. Adding another dimension with Jay. Uh, recording us definitely helped us reach our full potential. There was some magic there, and he really captured it. This record and these songs required more of uh, more attention to detail. We we had all really done our homework ahead of time. It was more just a matter of me sitting down and finding the right tone to complement uh, the rest of the band. Maybe we can yeah. hear it. No. Well, so, oh, so let's do this. Let's do this. Let's let's continue our science experiment, right? Okay. So we plug straight into this guy. Yeah. Let's plug straight into your Marshall. Let's switch this off. <laughs> is our problem. Yeah. Well, now that I hit it, now it works. It, it usually, it's old, so that's why that happened. Randall, uh, Captain One, 
It's definitely not as gainy as that one. Because Jeremy's going to do a rhythm track as well, right? Yeah. Oh, what about the chorus, though? Well, I'm going to definitely d d do the... There's no rhythm in the chorus, so it's going to sound like that. Right. And I'll have... There's no power chords in the in the chorus, you know? It's all single notes. Two guitars on it I don't think Jay was expecting this, but we just sort of worked our asses off. Our workflow and, you know, we, we basically just went in, you know, late morning, early afternoon every day and did not stop until we couldn't, you know, stand up anymore. When, when we got there, time just seemed to not matter anymore. There was nothing to see and there was nothing to do other than to make this record. I didn't want it to stop, I just wanted to keep going. I always feel like I live in the crevices of normal society anyway, and uh, this was just our way to speak about this, about how we are.
cool. That would scare my child. Blasting to play high notes or back, back and forth, down Great. Jennifer ship. Body that's well for life inside in my The second it takes to pray! I mean, I think, I think you could probably play six more takes and they'd all be a little bit different, but... Basically all good, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not sure that, like... Yeah, they're both great takes. Yeah, it's like... You know what I'm talking about, Jay? The one that hits just right on that I, corner. I kind of like that a little better. I feel like I feel like the slides kind of. I mean, if we want, if we we're going to split hairs about it, I feel like if you wanted to slide, maybe you should do it again because that slides a little bit. Like maybe I want to slide, maybe I don't. That's and the other one, the, the other one is just like your issues. The slide, your issues, the sustain. I think me and Jay are talking about the same thing. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah. The so slide's a little bit like. Eh, do is. I slide or not? It Something you do? Yep. So what do you do? I wish I could have just stayed with your triplet. You didn't? I mean, I do for, I do for a lot of plot, but it's like hey, I really wish know. I could have just stayed to like... You could never do that. I could. Don't say that. <laughs> you don't I'm want to. Like that. Yeah, that's that's true. True. It's going to be the one thing I... Like, uh, I just I played it right for the first one on my hands. That was even um, difficult. Go for it. It's
I listen to Hail Death, it touches me in ways that some of my favorite records don't. And I don't know if that's because I'm, I was immersed in the process of it or if it's just because I think it's that powerful. This is definitely the best record we've ever done as a, as a band or even as musicians. One thing to remember about this band is that um, if nothing else, there's a loyalty. All four of us are extremely loyal to one another and to ourselves. and. We would never sell this thing short. This locomotive is gaining steam, and um, I only see I only see strong things ahead. We're going to hit the ground running uh, harder than we ever have. It's now or never. So we have this beast in a in a cage that we can easily let out and just trash a city, or we could just like let it not do its thing and live in a cage. So I think it's. For us, it's time to unlock the gate and plow over everything. We are, we are, we are.